Now, this is my first mid-morning show, and I'd like to make a little bit of a series in the middle hour, interviewing young people from across the black country doing amazing things. So I'm very, 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 very excited <laughs> to be joined by our first guest here on Black Country Radio. It's Lydia Greatrix. Hello. Hi, uh, this is cool, isn't it? Doing it all over Zoom. Yeah, I know. Honestly, I really hope that we can have people back in the studio very soon. But Zoom works. It does its job, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you? How's lockdown treating you? I'm all right. I've got my cup of tea and yeah, having a, a couple of nice weeks off at the moment. So yeah, just relaxing, doing a load of jigsaws and <laughs> just oh, having fun. <laughs> that sounds ideal. So obviously I've had a peek at all your socials and everything, but our listeners won't know who you are maybe. So give us some instruction. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, so I'm a, a journalist. I graduated last year from Nottingham Trent Uni. Um, and then ever since I've just been trying to get my foot in the door in radio, really. Um, absolutely love radio. Um, absolutely love music journalism. So I kind of put the two together. Um, and yeah, I just kind of interview great artists and have a lot of fun doing it, really. Well, you're definitely sounding better than me this morning. I just cannot stop stumbling over my words. Oh. I think it's Monday morning <laughs> syndrome. But I had yeah. a look at your LinkedIn yesterday and oh my goodness, for someone so young, your journey has taken you to all sorts of places already. What is it yeah. that gave you that buzz for radio and, and where has it led you so far? Oh gosh, well, um, the buzz for radio kind of came, it's a kind of a, a weird, funny story really. Um, the one thing I remember was, um, it was like 20, I think it was 2011. And do you remember JLS? Oh, obviously they're coming back now. Um, they did a radio tour and they stopped off at the Signal One in Stoke. And I went to go and see them. I had a massive banner being like, marry me Aston, which just like makes me laugh now. Um, and I went and saw them. And then it kind of clicked in my brain that these kind of, these people are paid to chat to celebs and chat to music artists. And I was like, oh my gosh, you can actually do that. Um, so that was the kind of thing that, sparked me off in radio um and then the thing that's kind of um things it's led me to do oh my goodness I've I've done a lot of fun stuff um during my degree I got to go to Manchester and chat to Blue Peter presenters and Blue Peter was like my best my favorite show ever as a kid um I've worked at Gen 106 in Nottingham for a bit um what else have I done I've worked on the Jeremy Vine show for a week that was fun um and yeah now I'm just kind of trying to get trying to get work in the radio industry after graduating um and yeah it's a really exciting industry I think it's really exciting kind of um thing to do with your life <laughs> the real question is have you got any blue peter badges yourself I managed to get them all I think um and apart from the gold one uh tragic <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I know the listeners can't see right now, but I'm, I'm currently reaching up. Oh gosh, the, <laughs> the bouncy ball just bounced from my shelf. Um, I, I do have blue Peter badges. I keep them above my desk. So, oh gosh, I've nearly just broken the box. Show them um, off pride. Yeah, so I, I have my, my normal blue Peter badge here. Um, I got this for drawing a picture. Um, I have a silver blue Peter badge, which is for doing a poem. Um, I got a sports badge 2014 for getting my mate into tennis. Oh, I don't have that um, one. That one's new. It, they do it every year now, I think. Um, I've got a, a purple one uh, that I, I, I wrote a review or something, I think. But, and then I got a couple more as well. Um, but my favourite one, you say you don't have the gold one. No, sadly, you I don't. don't have... Look what I've got. I've I got am the so one. <laughs> jealous. You have been a high achiever from a young age. And honestly, your work experience, as you were saying, you've done work experience more locally. You've also done it at the bigger companies. And I think yeah. there's often a perception that it's better to get work experience at a big shot company. But I think local journalism is often overlooked as a good way to get more hands on experience and take on more responsibility. What do you think and what sort of what has your experience taught you about the difference between the two? Yeah, I really love local radio because you get to chat to local people um, and you just get to tell the stories of, of people where you live. Um, and it is a really great start because you get like so much responsibility. And there's also a lot of the time there's a very small team in local radio. Um, so that just naturally lends itself to doing a lot of stuff and um, getting a lot of experience. that You probably wouldn't get a national. So when I did the Jeremy Vine, 
it was so overwhelming. Um, and although I did get a lot of experience, like I answered phone calls on the Jeremy Vine show, you know, where they have like all the angry listeners ring, ringing in about Brexit and stuff. I managed to do that and it was such a fun experience. Um, and you get to meet a lot of interesting people as well. But I think local radio is just where my heart is at the moment. Um, you just get to meet so many lovely people. You get to tell happy news stories as well, which I know you're focusing on today. So. Yeah, I think I think local radio is where my heart is, but national is fun as well. <laughs> I am focusing on happy news today, and the fact that you've got a gold blue Peter badge is just yet another positive story to add. I've to actually the just broke. <laughs> I've broken, broken the, the box. box. <laughs> I apologise. I've contributed <laughs> to that. I want to go on to talk about your work in local radio in just a minute. But as a recent graduate during a global pandemic, I can imagine it's been very tough trying to get your foot into the industry. So, how's the job hunt going, and what's been your experience the last year? Oh my gosh, the job hunt is so hard. I think I really underestimated how difficult it is to get a job after a degree. Um, and especially during a pandemic as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, the moment I think the job count of applications is up to about 30, um, which I know is actually quite small in the grand scheme of things. Like some people apply for hundreds and they don't get anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really hard. Um, and I've found that I've had to really be a bit inventive with my job search. I've had to um, approach people myself rather than rely on job adverts popping up. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been quite hard, but I have had a couple of breakthroughs recently, which is really nice. I started to like get people notice me and um, I'm going to be getting my first ever paid bit of work very, very soon, which just blows my mind because I've, I've done radio for free for so long and then suddenly someone wants to pay me to do it and I'm like oh wow so exciting oh my goodness congratulations that is such good news but you're talking <laughs> about doing radio for free and at the moment you're hosting the women in music show over on gorgeous fm our neighbors mm -hmm. in wolverhampton so tell me a little bit about the show what made you choose to do that topic what's it been like um oh the women in music show is so much fun so it's every thursday at seven till nine on gorgeous fm um we we are also a community radio station like you guys at bcr um and i i started off wanting to do women in music when i was at uni because i used to do um the um the student radio station there uh, which was Fly FM at Knox Trent Uni. Um, and I did the Women in Music show for one year and it was a really simple show. It was literally just like music talk, music talk. Um, it, there wasn't many features on it or I didn't interview anyone. It was just music for an hour, basically. Um, and then I gave that a rest for my third year. And then after, after uni, I just found myself getting a bit kind of bored. And I saw the Gorgeous FM were, were starting up and I just thought, I need to make this a thing because I'm bored and I'm not getting anywhere in my job search. So I might as well. Um, and I just really love giving women like a platform. I give not just kind of like big, you know, big mainstream women, uh, women in music uh, a play, but also I really like to focus in on the local musicians and the indie musicians who don't get that much of a radio play and maybe don't make music that make, that gets on the radio a lot as well so my inbox is just jumping on the week on the week phase my inbox is just full of just indie artists just wanting to play on the radio and that makes me so happy um and yeah I'm on a I'm on a break from it at the moment but I will be back next next Thursday or first of April um yeah it's, it's a lot of fun I really love doing it now there's some mild inception going on here because I am on community radio interviewing you as a guest but I wanted to mm. ask you who is the coolest person that you've interviewed and what sort of prep goes into oh. the show I think a lot of listeners don't really understand the level of preparation that does need to go into some shows on the radio yeah oh, the coolest person I've interviewed oh my goodness recently I've had some really amazing people and I've just been mind blown that they've said yes um I chatted to Gabrielle recently about her new album she was so cool she even invited me to her tour <laughs> so that oh, might be happening way. I am that so jealous I absolutely and love it, Gabrielle she was like so crazy she was like let's have a party she was <laughs> like if you can't get any tickets just ring my manager she this is her name <laughs> I was like I didn't have a clue what to say um who else have I interviewed um I've interviewed Dodie recently she I've loved her since 
I was about 14. So she's going to be on the show when I come back on the 1st of April. Um, also, Michelle Visage, I, I chatted to and Faye Tosa from Steps. Like, that was crazy. Michelle kept calling me baby all the way through, and I was here for it. Um, oh, days. You've had such an amazing host of people on the show. That is genuinely <laughs> beyond cool. I yeah. saw you also produced a documentary, actually, though, on sexism and gender equality in the music industry. Yeah. Why do you think it is so important to give women the spotlight that you do? Um, it's so important. It's, it's just because... I think from learning about, like learning from when I've been doing the Women in Music show and just general research about women in music, like they, I think we as women in, in any industry are taken not as seriously as our male peers. Um, that's not like kind of a always, but it's it does happen. Um, and yeah, pe- women just don't get as much like cheering on as they should. And I feel like that's my duty to do that. Um, but yeah it's so important and I just I think ever since like growing up I've just always listened to female artists and I didn't realize this was a trend that was going all through my Spotify all through my life um and I just think like I'm just fascinated by people who make music whether they're men or women I'm just fascinated by how they make a song that gets on the radio is really catchy and then is like a soundtrack to people's lives so um, yeah, just in general, like I just love chatting to people who make music and the fact they're women are just even better, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm doing this new series on the show talking to young people because I really want to give young people a platform. And what do you think about the role of communi- community radio in that respect? You know, is it a good method of platforming voices that otherwise wouldn't really get a look in? Yeah, I think it is because um, community radio can give people such great starts in whether they want to work in radio or whether they want to be behind the scenes or um even if you're on the community radio and you're giving people a platform like it's so important because it's just like it's a nice bit of practice you know to get you into it I think every single radio presenter or radio producer or anyone who works in radio right now will always say that they were they started in community radio or hospital radio or any kind of unpaid radio job um and yeah, it just gives you that little bit of experience. Um, and everyone's there because they want to be there. They're not paid to be there. So it's nice, like, atmosphere to start off in. Yeah, it's good. Speaking of starting off, obviously, you're now going to spread your wings and fly into the into the big world of paid journalism work. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about what's up next for you or dare you not divulge? Oh, um, well, at the moment, I'm actually preparing for my first ever paid article commission, which is quite cool. Um, Because I'm, I'm a broadcast journalist, I, I hardly ever write proper articles. So, um, yeah, I'm currently preparing for that. That is for a music charity and it should be out maybe next week, maybe the week after. Um I'm also getting some freelance work at a place that makes radio bulletins for other radio stations. They make radio bulletins for community radio stations, actually. Um, So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, That's all I've got coming up at the moment. But hopefully I'll be able to carry on with the Women in Music show. But um, I'm just happy for as long as it lasts and as long as people want to listen to it. (laughs) We hope so too. And honestly, I wish you all the best going forward. But before I let you go... What would yeah. your advice be for any young budding broadcast journalists oh. looking to go down the same route? It's a difficult time to get into the industry. So what would you say to them? Oh, gosh. Um, I would say just keep on going. I, I get a lot of people telling me to keep on going. And I think it's so true. Um, make connections within the industry. Slide into people's DMs. Um you might actually be surprised at how many people want to help you because I always thought everyone was my competition in this industry but actually people want to help you so um chat to people who are doing what you want to do don't give up just keep on going and um yeah reach out to people don't expect the, the opportunity to come to you you've got to go out and get it that is absolutely fantastic advice well listen thank you so much Lydia for coming on and inspiring lots of people with your passion and your drive. Thanks so much for having me.